Hey guys, I'm going to be doing a video today where I'm going to be sharing a design that I've been tossing around in my head for the last six months to a year. I was kind of inspired to share it because of Jeremy of Wind Power and More. Uh, if you guys ain't familiar with this channel and don't watch his channel, you should check him out. He's got some really good pulse motor stuff on there. He ain't on no bullshit. But today I'm going to be sharing this design. I've had the picture forever. Let me see if I can get it to come up here. I originally found it in a video and had to take a screenshot of it. It was never on the internet. It's now, recently I've seen it on the internet. We have Nikola Tesla there with one of his designs. I've seen it called the Tesla Alternator. Originally when I seen it, they called it a Tesla Transmitter. So we're not going to go off of any patent material that's been subject to change. Because I believe all the patents out there have been changed. If the inventor ain't alive and willing to talk about his invention, you can't believe what's on the paper. So let's start out. I want to share the design first. I'm going to bring the phone back up. Might need to use it for a reference on the picture. First, we're going to start out with the wheel. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about different than, a little bit different than Nikola Tesla's. But there's a few things in there that should be added that I'm not adding. So first, we would have your wheel. It's going to have four magnets on it. We'll say they're all north facing out. So these are all north facing out. Try to do this quick. So the video ain't too long because I have the proof of concept set up on the table over there. We'll go to that after the drawing. So you've got your rotor. Got your four types of magnets on it on the bottom half is iron that will be anywhere from quarter inch to one inch thick. Sorry about my horrible drawing skills. These pieces of iron will be tapered. <laughs> with steel and iron and magnets say if the magnet was in this position here it would naturally want to suck to the thickest mass on the iron these tapers should be a little thinner here It'd be more like But anyways, the magnet will naturally want to suck to the thickest part of the iron in the middle, would be magnets to your iron. If these were north out facing fields, this side would want to be the south, this side would want to be a north. So naturally, the magnets would even suck even harder because there's two different types of field. Iron doesn't care if it's north and south at the same time or two norths at the same time. But the north will be attracted to the saturated steel with the south field, which will pull it into the center position. 
between the north and the south. So at the top, we would incorporate a coil at a specific spot so that when the magnet sucked to the neutral spot between the north and south field, you would energize the coil, which would pull shift the magnetic field to allow the, the magnet to carry farther. Now the magnet is above a thick piece of steel that's saturated with the north. It's naturally going to want to repel that way to the least resistant point in the iron. With Nikola Tesla's, not positive if there was any magnets in there. You really can't tell from the photograph. He has a ring that actually goes all the way around the wheel. There's a reason for that. And that comes back to if you had the coils on the ring. You would have to think about it as like Ed Lee Skyland's perpetual motion holder. Where he actually had two sets of fucking coils on a U-shaped iron. Put a piece of steel across the end. When energized, the steel stayed connected to the square. If you build this perpetual motion holder big enough... You can actually run a DC armature on the inside of the perpetual motion holder after you've already energized it and connected the piece and pull the wires off. It stays connected. That magnetic field is in there in the four spots like a magnet. And you can actually run a DC armature on the inside of it from the magnetic field that's trapped in the perpetual motion holder. So I believe Nikola Tesla did the whole thing. So that when it was energized, it held and trapped that magnetic field, which made all the iron hold the field and stronger. But anyways, on the ends, we could put additional coils here with the third coil there. With iron, when you pulse it one direction... It becomes a permanent magnet. But when you energize these coils correctly, it will cause an alignment in the steel to go from one field to the other. It will reach through the entire piece of steel. Nikola Tesla had the cross beam on his. I don't know if it held magnetic properties or not I believe in maybe not unless he was setting it up like a transformer let me bring his picture up one more time we'll get over to the proof of concept as you can see clearly see in the picture the bottom half is thicker and tapered before it goes around my design is only going to be the half Moon style. But I believe that's Nikola Tesla there. I believe the guy in the middle was J.P. Morgan. I'm not really sure. I have to look up the pictures of these guys. All right, let's get over to the proof of concept real quick. I'm just going to pick the phone up and hold it this time. The weight I was just using to see if I could get the thing to... Carry through farther. Currently, you can tell it's attracted to the south field if it was the north. This would be the north field over here. So we have an opposing field on this side. It wants to push back, push away. You get onto this side, it wants to push it away. Now my breakaway is when the magnet is about halfway through the first coil there, the edge of it here, is the actual breakaway point.
So the theory was on the drawing that it will suck the magnet down to the south field and stop. When you energize the coil, it pull shifts it over to the repelling field so that it can carry through. You can say maybe the wheel ain't balanced when you see this, but it is. So if we start out, we bring it, turn this light on here. If we bring it to the repelling field here, and you just let go of it, where it repels, it will continue through. And you can see how far it coasted up on the coil. We'll do it again. fingers in the way. Get back farther. Let go of it. These fields here are reaching clear up. The repelling field does to a point. Put it here again. So literally on this motor, we only have to make up with the kinetic energy. Let me lay this ruler down here. See if we can keep it in the picture. Right here is the breakaway position. Literally, the coil only would have to make up a quarter of an inch of the field. Because when you energize the coil into the same south, it's going to want to wrap hard on the north field. So really, you're, you're pull shifting the you're shifting the flux line over, and it isn't the weight of this that's carrying it all the way through. I put that on to see if I could get it to carry it through farther. Uh, it does a tiny bit like the, the weight isn't even needed for it to carry through the cycle so the duty cycle could be down to 5-10% on the pulse rate I just wanted to share this. It can be based off of this design. I'll give me some feedback. Appreciate you all watching. Next video I'm about to do will be the truth about the Adams motor, uh, some facts about it. Well, thanks for watching.